So I just finished putting up a three-part series on whiteboard apps for the iPad, and I just discovered one that was in front of me the whole time. It's completely free, comes pre-installed on every single iPad, and honestly, I think it's probably one of the best iPad whiteboard apps out there, and it's one you would never expect. It's the iWork Suite Numbers application. So Apple releases three programs in their productivity suite for MacBooks, iPads, iPhones, basically any device you have of Apple's will have this suite and it's included completely free. And it includes their pages, which is their version of Microsoft Word. They have numbers, which is their version of Microsoft Excel. And they have Keynote, which is their version of Microsoft PowerPoint. I was playing around with numbers a bit and I discovered it has kind of a hidden feature on iPad and makes it into a wonderful whiteboard app that I think unless you need one or two specific features, mainly that ruler feature that I showed in some of those other whiteboard apps, that's about the only thing missing from this. If you just need a simple, down-to-earth, really good working whiteboard app, check out Numbers. As I said, I did not expect this one to be that good and it is awesome. Before I jump in though, if you could just take a quick moment and just subscribe to my channel, I would greatly appreciate it. Otherwise, let's jump into Numbers as a whiteboard app. When you open up the app, you'll see all your storage locations on the left hand side. You'll see on the right hand side that you have Recents. So you'll see right now I've got the blank sheet music um, set up, and which is my real go-to app that I use a ton of times in my own class because I'm always putting up rhythms and writing out different notes and things like that. So having that kind of up and ready to go is really, really nice. But you can create folders in here and all those things. I am planning a video that goes more in depth on each of the Apple iWork Suite programs. So stay tuned for that one. So to add a blank, fresh new document, you'll see the plus button on the top right hand side and you'll go ahead and tap on that. And it's going to give you some basic templates for opening up. So for this, because you're, you're actually going to erase what's there, go ahead and just create a blank template and tap on that. It's going to open up an actual spreadsheet, but because we're using this as a whiteboard app, you just want to delete that real quickly. And how you do that is you'll see that little circle icon in the top left-hand corner of the spreadsheet there between the, uh, to the left of the A and just above the numbers. If you tap on that, you'll see an option that pops up and lets you do a couple different things. You just want to tap on Delete. And now all of that is gone. And now you have your blank template. So now that the table's gone, all I have to do is take my Apple Pencil and just quickly tap on the screen and it will show my palette across the bottom. And you're going to see a lot of different tools across the bottom. The first one is you're going to see the pencil with the A. And if I tap on that, you'll see it raises up a little bit. That allows you to scribble out text. If I tap on the next one, you're going to see that the previous tool lowers and that one raises. That's kind of your pen tool. The next tool is your pencil tool. So it gives it kind of a pencil-y look to it. The next one is like a crayon. That's the easiest way to think about it. The next one is your highlighter, then you have your eraser, then you have your select tool, then you have your color palette. So we're going to start with the pen tool because that'll probably be the most commonly used tool that you'll actually use. So you just tap on that to go to it. If you tap on it again, it'll allow you to select the thickness. So in this one we have five ranges of thicknesses. So if I tap on the thinnest one, that's our first one, second third, fourth, and fifth. So it gives you a really nice range of thicknesses. Then if you want to change the color, you'll see over on the color palette on the right hand side, I can just tap on a color and it instantly changes that color. Now let's say you would like to have a different color you'll see this rainbow palette. If I tap on that, from here I can select all sorts of different colors and I can choose on a spectrum or sliders. And if you know your hex code, web designers use this all the time, but if you by chance know your hex color code, you can put that right in there. I think the grid or the spectrum are probably your two most common ones. So let's say I want a little more purpley one. I can tap on that and there's my purple color. So it gives you by default five different colors and then that sixth slot, you can change it to anything you would like. 
So probably my one complaint is you can't really customize all those different colors individually like you can in some of those other apps. But honestly, probably for most people, just having two or three different colors is all you really need with that option to be able to change that sixth one to anything you want. So that's the really nice feature with that. Now to erase all this stuff, you tap on the eraser and it's going to let you erase just like a normal pencil would. You'll see I'm just kind of scribbling as I go down. Now, if you remember, especially with my favorite app, which was Explain Everything, one of my biggest complaints was, was the erasing. There's some different features with this. If I tap on the eraser again, it allows me to change the size. So my eraser can go fairly big and allows me to still erase pretty quickly. However, there's one more option. If I tap on the eraser again, you're going to see this object eraser. If I tap on that, all I have to do is go through the line and it's gone. So if I want to get rid of all those lines really quickly, just swipe through them and they're gone. That's the feature for me I really, really like. So let me get back to the black pen. Do it there. Now I'm going to draw for me. I do a lot with music notes. So I'll draw out a couple of music notes and write their rhythms in using the Takadimi system. Let's say I wanted to erase all that really quickly. If I have the pencil with the X tool selected, which stands for the object eraser, all I have to do is swipe through all those and they're all gone really, really quickly. So as you can see, it's a very, very fast tool for erasing and that's what I like because I want to be able to write out rhythms really quickly and just whoop, get rid of them. Then you got the pencil tool. It kind of is like a little fuzzier look. Again, you can change all the colors. You've got the crayon tool, which is like a bigger version of the pencil. The next tool, let me just draw a circle here, is the select tool. It's that little pencil off to the right, right before the color palette. And if I draw a circle around that object, it gives you some different options. So you can cut and paste it in a different spot. You can copy and paste it. You can just delete it. You can resize it. Do all sorts of things with it. And then you can duplicate it. I'm going to erase all that. So that's a select tool that allows you to select just as it shows. So that's the basic palette features. The other thing you can do too is if you have the pen or the, the pencil or the marker, any of those tools, and you're just drawing along, let's say you want to get to the eraser. Now I tapped on the eraser. Your pencil has that feature in it. If you're using the Generation 2 pencil that has the little flat edge on it, you can tap about a half inch up from the bottom on the flat edge or so. It's not exactly a half inch. It's just kind of in that area. But it'll jump back and forth between the last two tools you've used. So if you're using a lot of the pen tool and the eraser, all I'm going to do now is just double tap on the bottom and you're going to see the pen tool selected. Now I'm going to double tap again and it's going to, you're going to see the pen tool lower and the eraser tool raise. So it allows me to really quickly jump back and forth between them. So I'm going to do my notes and let's say, oh, I messed that up. Get rid of those and they're gone. So it makes it jumping back and forth from the eraser and pen tool very, very simple. However, this is the same in all the whiteboards app. This is not unique to the numbers app. I just like to really reiterate it because it's such a nice feature. Now the next part is you can add things into this. So just like the other apps, you were able to take photos and all those things, you can do the same exact thing here. So if I tap on the plus button, you're going to see I can insert some tables because you got to remember this is Apple numbers, so it's very database driven. But over on the right hand side, you'll see the little photo icon. I can insert a photo or video. I can insert a photo from my camera. I can record audio. I can insert a web video, use image gallery. I can copy and paste, use a drawing, an equation. So let's say I'm just going to use my camera. And I'll just take a picture of part of my setup here. So let's say you had a document down or something like that. You could hold your iPad over the document. I'm going to snap the picture, tell it to use the photo. And now from here, I can zoom in and out. I can actually resize it, and then if I tap on it, there comes my palette. Let me get a color that will show a little bit better. I can say, oh, check that out. This is nice. And I can notate all over the document just like I did before. So as I said, you tap on the plus button, tap on the little image icon on the top right of that little selection tool, and you have all those choices that you can insert from. And then if you want to delete, you just tap on it with your finger. And I think you can do it with a pencil too. 
No, you want to use your finger to tap on it and then tap on it again. And you can cut, copy, delete the object and you'll see the object's gone. Oh, and before I do that real quick, let me undo that. Let's say you want to erase just the writing. The, the pen tool for the eraser will only do the writing. It won't erase what's behind it. So that picture I put in there will not go away. So you see when I erase, the picture still stays. And one of my favorite ways of using that, I'm going to pop out of this real quick. And I'm going to open up my blank sheet music. If I notate in here, this is, as I said, what I really like about this. When I go to erase, it's not going to erase the sheet music part. It's just going to erase the notes that I've written in. So this is where, if you have a template that you want to use, let me back out of that and get back into my original one. So what you can do is go out on the web and if you're doing graphing or geography lessons, whatever the lessons you're doing and you need a backdrop, if you're doing writing lessons with little kids where you need to have the big lined paper, go out and find a copy of an image on the web and you can paste it right into this document and you can always have it there ready to go. And on the left, you'll see it says sheet one up at the top here. If I click the plus button, I can do new sheet. Again, tap that little zero icon, hit delete, and I can create another one. Same process, delete. Now I've got multiple sheets. I could have different backgrounds in each one. Let's say you're covering the globe. So I could have an image of the globe up, and then in sheet two, I could have an image of the U.S. up. And then sheet three, I could have an image of Maine up or whatever state I want. So you could easily jump between them. And if you tap on it again, you can rename it. So I could name that one, you know, globe, hit done. So you can really mark what each one is and you can create as many sheets as you want and quickly jump between them. So for me, I just need that sheet music page, but let's say I'm doing something with another type of music. I could create a sheet with that music already there. So I'm not getting in and out of the document. I'm just tapping on the sheet to jump between that. Really, really nice feature for quickly moving around in the app. Now, as I said, if you're using this as a whiteboard app, most of this stuff across the top right you're going to ignore. The biggest one you're going to use is tapping on the plus button, tapping the image, and going from there. When you're done, you just tap on the spreadsheets, and it'll take you right back out to your main menu, and it'll have that document already saved for you. But if I want to go in and name it, you'll see blank across the top center. If I tap on that, it'll allow me to rename it. And I can name it anything I want. Hit done. And when I hit spreadsheets on the top left, you'll see test template is already there. And if you have a MacBook or an iPhone, you can actually hop right on that, go into numbers, and you could open up the document right there too. As I stated in the beginning of this video, this was an app I wasn't expecting to cover as a whiteboard app. I completely came across this just messing around and stumbled across how good it really is. I was completely shocked and I've already switched over to it as my main whiteboard app. As I said in the previous videos, I was using the Microsoft whiteboard app. Now I'm using the numbers app. I've already put it on my main screen. I've already created a few templates like I mentioned in the earlier part of this video, but what else can you expect? It's completely free. It's part of the Apple ecosystem. You can't ask for better than that. The only time, as I said, I would look at one of those other ones is if you need one of those other advanced features. They are wonderful whiteboard apps. And you really, as I mentioned throughout my other videos, you need to find what works best for you. But don't hesitate to check out numbers. As I said, it's not one you would expect to check out, but it does work really well as you just saw in this video. So please take a second and hit that like button down below. And while you're down there, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel and help support it. I greatly appreciate it. I think I've gained almost 20 subscribers in the past week and a half, and I'm so close to hitting that 100 person mark. So please don't hesitate to share my channel out with others that you think might find these things helpful. I really try to gear these towards teachers and students and things that they might find helpful in their classroom and make life hopefully a little bit easier.
If you have a question or a comment, please, please don't hesitate to leave it below. I always read through every single comment that is left below, and I've already gotten a bunch of ideas and great suggestions for future videos. Or if you just have a question that you're not sure on something, I'll either reply in the question to it, or it might even spark me doing another video. So I really, really do enjoy those comments. And as I said, please, please hit that subscribe button down below. I do really, really appreciate it, and thank you for your support. Otherwise, this is Adam on Tech, signing off.